Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for our 30 on Thursday today presented by Protivity. Today's topic is human resource automation with Nintex. Our 30 on Thursday webinar series is a bi-weekly 30-minute SharePoint webinar series presented by Protivity. Our next webinar will be upgrading to SharePoint 2013 taking place on December 5th, um, same time at 1.30. Our full schedule of webinars is posted at sharepoint.protivity.com slash webinars. Today's session is being recorded. All of our past sessions are posted on our website at sharepoint.protivity.com slash archived webinars. We have over 20 different topics of short um, recordings from BI to other third-party products to general end user topics. During today's presentation, please insert all questions in the question window in your GoToMeeting panel, and that should be at the right of your screen, and we will try to save all the questions to the end. Today's topic is human resource automation with Nintex. Today's presenter is Terry Simpson, Solution Architect here at Protivity, and I am Julia Oates, Marketing and Communications for Protivity, and I will be moderating today's session. So let's get started. I'm going to turn it over to Terry, and he will show you a little bit more about Nintex. Thanks, Julia. So in today's session, we're going to cover um, a lot of things around human resources kind of automation within uh, the Nintex platform. So I'm going to bring up the presentation here for today. And what we're going to talk about is streamlining the human resources uh, process. Um, there's a lot of challenges and solutions in the HR process you know, around uh, onboarding, um, expenses, leave requests. There's just a tremendous amount of opportunity within the HR uh, side of the business. And Nintex really supplies a great tool in order to kind of automate some of those processes. So in today's session, the first thing I want to talk about is um, really streamlining those HR resources. So at the end of the day, there's a big reduction in the cost and the risk in the hires and departures um, for the, the organization. Um, a lot of visibility into the control of the expenses. Um, and the thing that I love about this is from an HR governance perspective, um, it really allows the organization to put a structured process around what it is doing. Um, most organizations in the HR department have a pretty defined process, but a lot of times it's a manual process where you need to train those employees to execute it in a standard way. So from a compliance perspective, if you can automate these processes, they become very, very consistent and are very reliable um, throughout the business. Um, there's also better use of business data and systems um, because you're maximizing as much as you can the resources that you have available, especially within the SharePoint platform, and just enhance that much more with using the Nintex workflow and even forms. Uh, a lot higher efficiency, lower costs, and ultimately just a lot less paperwork uh, throughout the processes that you have. So one of the things we talk about um, in the painful process that can be uh, with a paper uh, mechanism that you have, um, hiring and training costs are a big thing. You know, maintaining the compliance and governance, um, all of those things can be made to be much more efficient and a lot less painful uh, within the organization. And the thing that I really like about the solution at the end of the day is there's a lot less man hours that's involved in the hiring and training process. And that process that you put in place allows for much more um, consistency and um, just a better all, overall way of training um, those individuals. And it's just little things like uh, the review of an employee after 30 days or 60 days or 90 days. A lot of times that gets missed or an individual in the human resources area needs to babysit that and make sure that those are being followed up on. And with the workflow, it just allows you to automate those small little processes um, that are very consistent over and over and over again um, and makes it very useful and reduce the number of hours that you're going to spend on those type of things. 
So the next slide here is just a, a screenshot of uh, you know what you may do in an onboarding process, and it allows to have a central place for let's say hiring managers to come into, and an individual who is going to make the decision to hire a new employee could be at the department level, or it could be a hiring manager within HR can come to one place and say, you know what, we're hiring a new employee and I'm going to go out and fill out this short little form about who we're going to hire and give it a little bit of, you know, put a little information in there. So the light box that shows up or the form on this particular page shows the individual first name, last name, uh, what manager they're going to report to, what department are they going to work within, maybe their email address, job title, and obviously you're going to put more things in here depending upon what your business is kind of dictating is the initial kickoff here. So you can fill all that out, simply hit the save button or submit button, and the workflow can kick off and start this automated process. And the thing that I love about Nintex is that it can even go to the extent of creating Active Directory accounts, um, assigning those Active Directory accounts into distribution groups, and then kicking off the rest of the workflow for the organization. Um, you know, the IT department is probably going to have to um, get a machine ready or a laptop. Um, they may have a key fob for the front door. Um, HR area is going to need to go out and create maybe a payroll entry in ADP or whatever you're using to track that information. Very, very useful tool um, for this type of thing. All right, so let's get through these pieces. And that's what I'm talking about in the onboarding process here that we're just trying to show. So all those tasks that need to be taken out, network permissions, email account, computer hardware, uh, the employee handbook. And this is a nice one because most of the uh, human resource departments that we talk with, um, in that onboarding process, there are probably a dozen or two dozen forms that need to be filled out and signed off on. I need to uh, you know, sign off on the fact that I did read the employee handbook and I'm going to abide by it so I can go and fill out that form. And the nice thing about the workflow is that if you wanted to, you could even go out and create all those documents and then just show that to the employee that you need to sign off on all of these and the workflow can guide them through that process. And even give them reminders because after, you know, um, five days of being hired, maybe I have to have all that paperwork done and it will give me some of those subtle reminders with emails or instant messages. All right. Quarterly reviews is a big thing. These get missed a lot of times. Um, they could be quarterly employee reviews for each employee. Um, they could be done on an annual basis. Uh, there's a lot of scheduling that's done around this and especially in an organization where you have a lot of employees, there's a tremendous amount of efficiency that can be gained from this. So that you can have all those uh, folks out there and then have this Nintex workflow send out the email notifications, put calendar items on their calendar or tasks on their calendar in order to remind them about these individual um, items that are coming up. Expenses is another popular area within the human resources realm to gain some uh, efficiencies. So a lot of time there are some pain points, like the lack of visibility in um, ongoing expenditures, a lack of control over those claims that are out there, and also no enforcement on standard practices. And the workflow allows you to build a lot of consistency to help out with some of these pain points. So from a visibility perspective, you know, you can create the expense item and the individual employee can then have a view of all the expenses that they have outstanding. And with that, the workflow will allow you to change the status of that expense item as it goes through the process. So if you have three or four different folks that have to approve that, the status will be updated. Once the check is then cut or deposited, you know, you can keep those statuses up to date throughout the process. So there's a lot of visibility for the employee to be able to see what's going on with the expense process along for the employer to be able to monitor um, what processes each expense um, submission is in. And ultimately the enforcement of those standard practices is very consistent as well. 
Um, and I love the ability within some of the expenses that we build out to even assign those expenses to the appropriate individuals based upon maybe the request. Uh, so the manager that you report to directly may approve items up to $500 anything over $500 but yet under a thousand may go to finance you know you can set up some rules for where those things get routed to and who sees those individual uh, items you know all those items within the expense claim can be stored electronically um, we can require uh, evaluation approval for each of those claims and ultimately we can enforce company policy through that automation and when that company policy begins to change it's very very easy to change that policy um, because if it's you know three people approved it before and now only one person needs to approve it very easy to kind of update the workflow throughout that process when it comes to having a centralized place for those um, expense claims, this is kind of a similar view of what you can look at. So in this view, you see the title uh, for the individual expense items on the main portion of the page there, what the status those are in. So you see the top one's in progress, the next one's already approved, what cost center did it go against, all of those items. And there's a nice little form here when you go to submit each one of these. Uh, so very, very centralized location to track all of this stuff. Managers can assort to maybe filter on multiple ones. So as an end user, my only I may only see my items, but the manager can see all the items that maybe come under their call center uh, or their employees that have. So there's a lot of different views that you can create based upon where you're at in the organization and what you're doing with the expense um, process. Also, we are able to automate the approval process that reinforces the, the spending policies. And I love the notification ability to be able to send out or have the workflow send out these emails. And being able to go in and send out that email, which I'll so, show you here in just a second. So in this example, it says, you know, Eden has submitted a sales expense. It's recognizing that Eden's the one that submitted it. And it's making those references. What's the dollar amount? What cost center does it go against? Um, you can see the original request right there in the link. So it's a very personalized email that gets sent to the manager or approving person of this individual expense item. And then that individual has everything that they need, most likely, in order to make that decision. And I love that about the automation in the process because now the manager or individual that's going to approve this can just leverage the lazy approval functionality of just replying to the email and typing in the word approved and going on from there. And that's where a lot of that efficiency comes into play because that hiring manager may be out of the office, on vacation, at an airport, in a meeting. And he sees that come through and he, if he's expecting it, he can just quickly approve it. So instead of having to wait to get back to his physical location at his desk or somewhere else, um, he doesn't have to wait on that and he can quickly approve the process, which ultimately gives the benefit back to the employee of getting their expense reimbursement uh, done much faster um, because a lot of times the delay in the approval for something as simple as that could delay it to another pay period or another week payroll cycle um, a lot of things can happen there so a lot of efficiency that can be gained um, throughout the process and here are a couple bullets on the right hand side uh, that kind of reinforce that uh, the one that I love to show off the most, and I'll show it here to you in just a second, is the leave request module. And so there's a couple pain points. There's a very much a high volume of requests in most organizations. Um, if I have you know 20 days that I'm going to be off in a, in a single year, I could make 20 individual requests over the course of that year. And if I'm in an organization that has 300 employees or 500 employees, which I'll show you in a second, that's a tremendous amount of requests that need to be approved. And if it's paper-based, um, that's a full-time job for human, an individual human resources to do that. So there's a high cost in man hours to manage something as simple as a vacation request. Uh, there's also a lot of overlapping and inconvenient holidays that create expense gaps or expertise gaps. Um, so there's a lot of things that kind of play into that. And with this solution, you can convert all those paper forms that you may have today into electronic forms, which reduces a lot of manpower there. And we can even connect that into finance and HR systems to um, 
you know, avoid any of that data entry that's happening over and over again. Uh, the one that we do a lot is, for instance, with ADP. So a lot of employers use ADP to process their payroll systems. And you can simply use a web service uh, to call over to ADP and pull that data out to say, how many hours does Terry have available for his leave type, uh, whether it's sick leave or vacation, bereavement, you know, whatever it is. And then also we can write back in there uh, how many we're looking to consume so that that external system can become the authoritative or maintained as the authoritative copy of that data and we can send it back and forth. Uh, also manage the holiday calendar to avoid uh, costly overlaps there uh, as well. So that's another nice thing in the solution. So in this example, I'll show you real quick, there can be up to, like say for instance, a 75% cost reduction. So one hour um, per request, so we have requests, follow-ups, approvals, all of those things go into one individual re request. Not only just the individual requesting it, but your manager and HR processing it. You'd be surprised at how long or how many hours are included in that one request. So as an individual employee, if I made just five requests a year, which most of us request vacation more than five times a year, across 500 employees at a rate of $30 an hour, that's $75,000 a year right there just in time that you have um, used. That's almost a full-time resource in HR that's just managing vacation requests or leave requests, I should say. If we automate that, we can reduce that time typically from an hour all the way down to 15 minutes by leveraging online forms, the email approval process. If I stick to the same statistics of five requests a year, 500 employees, $30 an hour, now my costs have come down to um, right around $18,000, $19,000 a year. So what you've done is taken uh, a lot of the workload off of HR people through a manual process and really given time back to HR to work on other important things beyond just leave requests and they can uh, do a more of the core function that they're there to perform. Um, just a tremendous amount of paper reduction. I actually love the ability to kind of get all of that paper reduction out and then be able to have um, these just kind of online and leveraging those. I want to show you real quick this example uh, on a site and show you how that works. I want to show you the end user experience first and then after we show you the end user experience I want to back up and show you how we built it and really how the Nintex tool works. So on this page, um, very basic out of the box page here, uh, I have the leave requests that I've made and then I have the calendar showing what requests are out there. But as an employee I can just come in here and add a new item onto the page and I see who I am, the type of leave that I want, maybe that I'm feeling sick today and I want to put that request out there. So I'm going to take vacation uh, or sick leave um, from tomorrow on Friday. Seems like a good day to start your sick leave. Maybe I'm feeling really sick and I'm going to go through uh, the 27th of next week. And I'm just going to say that I'm out sick and go ahead and hit save. So that from the employee's perspective, very, very easy to submit that request. Um, went ahead and hit submit and the workflow has now taken over the request. And from here, um, a couple notifications are going to go out. Uh, me as the employee, I'm going to get an alert notifying me that um, the vacation request has been approved or received. And then my manager is also going to get an email notifying a manager that the um, request is out there and he needs to assist with um, approving that individual request. So we'll see the instant message that just showed up. And that instant message up here in the top left says, hey, your sick leave request was received. So me as an employee, I've now got notification uh, that the system, per se, has gotten uh, my email. But from there, what I really want to do is I want to jump into my boss's email, if I can magically do that, and open up um, his email. I can open that up. There we go. And so I want to open up my boss's email and see the vacation request in there. So here it is. Eden's requested sick leave and it referenced everything that I just filled out from the 22nd over to the 27th, which is 32 hours. Uh, HR, by the way, says he's entitled to 80. Uh, as a hiring, or not a hiring manager, but as a manager, I have pretty much everything that I need to make the decision. And I can simply just come in and say, reply to the message. 
uh, approved, and you can type in whatever terms that you dictate here. Approved, approve, yes, no, no way. You know, whatever terms you want to put out there, you can drop those in, and uh, Nintex will recognize uh, the terms that you set up for that lazy approval. And then here in a second, I'm going to get another instant message it says congratulations, your vacation's been approved or sick leave's been approved, and then it'll add it into the the calendar down here. And so the thing that I love about this is each step of the way. I had very little engagement as an employee in the process. The form was super easy to fill out. The manager just hit reply. Each of those steps does not take much time. And HR didn't have to get involved much at all because everything's documented here automatically. There's a list where all the vacation requests or leave requests are maintained. The calendar shows everyone that has time off. I only see my item here, but you can uh, filter it so that only employees can see theirs and then maybe HR can see everyone else's. So really, really efficient process. So here in just a second, the workflow will fire off another instant message here that I'll be able to see that. So when that's highlighted, I'll come back to it real quick. But I want to show you how we built that. Um, now, first and foremost, we're just in a list uh, in the leave request. And within there, I'll come into the ribbon interface up at the list, and I come to the same exact location where we fill out um, other workflows, whether it's an out-of-the-box workflow using SharePoint Designer, come down just a little bit lower to Nintex workflows, and I can stay within this web application and build out this workflow. The other thing that I love about this is that it's so easy to use with the drag and drop functionality that you've opened up a world of new individuals that can now build workflows. Because I don't have to have C Sharp or HTML knowledge in order to build workflows now. All I need to know how to do is drag and drop items from the left hand side over into the user interface right in the middle. Very easy to, to build out a workflow process here. And you can get very creative. And it doesn't take um, a very technical skill set to be able to build something out as small as just a vacation workflow that we see here, our leave request. And then you can get more complicated. So if you wanted to, the integration with ADP, if you wanted these web service calls to go out there, you don't have to have that at first. You can have just the basic approval process and then build it out uh, to go on from there. I'll take just a second for those who have not seen this interface, many of you probably have, to show you how you configure these actions. So then send a fit notification action, I can come in and configure that one. And the light box that's going to come up, uh, very easy to fill out. It's going to whoever the initiator was. We can CC other folks uh, or choose who it comes from just by using the little people picker here. What's the subject? What's the, the uh, here with the main body of the message and then we can come in and insert references so what type of leave is it is right there and I love this integration with all the site columns or list columns that are out there so that I can come into that leave request and pick out what it is that I want to put in here so maybe the start date of that request is an item I want to reference simply hit OK put it in here and then we can add some text in and that's going to continue to show for that individual uh, end user very, very easy to configure these notifications. Probably one of the simplest things to do uh, when, when building the workflow. And there's the instant message that I got right there that says my vacation request was approved. I'll jump back real quick uh, here in a second and I'll show you that it's on the calendar. So for this particular item, I'm going to scroll around here for just a second. We'll come down the page and look at the rest of this particular workflow. And we'll see that we have the two outcomes, uh, reject and approve. So if it's rejected, I'm going to send a notification probably to the uh, whoever initiated it, and then probably their manager as well uh, so that they can have a copy, a documented copy of the rejection that was sent out. And then ultimately, if it was approved, I want to go back into that system, external system of wherever that leave balance came from and update it. This would be using a web service call. And then also want to go to that calendar and add it into the calendar so that it's out there in that list and everyone can see it. And then ultimately send another notification that says congratulations. Very, very easy to configure all of these items. So for example, this little flexi task that's in here in the middle, if I come in to configure this one, you'll see who it gets assigned to. So in this particular example, it's the common manager within Active Directory uh, that gets the assignment. There's the email that he received, and then it's very easy to add these outcomes. So if I wanted to put another outcome, for instance, like pending, I'll go ahead and select OK. 
and then as soon as I hit save, I'm going to have a third outcome down here that I can now add items to in the event that I want it to go into a pending state. So maybe instead of the common manager, it gets sent over to HR for further review because maybe the manager felt like they couldn't make a decision, so they wanted to put it down a, another process. So very, very user-friendly interface to be able to do this. Um, I won't go into too much detail here, but there are tons of tasks over here on the left-hand side that you have the ability to integrate. Uh, convert items from Word to PDF, check things in, check them out. All the provisioning items, like creating Active Directory accounts and groups and assigning the individuals, all that stuff's kind of over there on the left-hand side. The other thing that I want to show you real quick is the forms within Nintex as well, because this really goes hand-in-hand -hand, uh, with the workflow as well, because when you send out that request, I also want that form, potentially, to be very user-friendly as well. So I'm going to go into the Leave Request list, and if I want to create a form that's much more appealing than the out-of-the-box one, because I'll show you the out-of-the-box one here real quick, kind of plain vanilla SharePoint, really no branding, styling, or anything there, I can simply come up to the List Settings tab within the ribbon interface, and I'm just going to select one button. So all I'm going to do is click Nintex Forms, and it's going to come in, and it's going to put the logo for your organization uh, or the header up in there. And it's also going to assign some styling to that particular form as well so that you can allow individuals in the organization to create these forms very easily and have them branded for your organization that's out there. And it's nice because you can even come in and target different mobile devices. So if I want to target the iPhone, I can come out and click on iPhone. And this is the link, or the not the link, but the format for which an iPhone user is going to see. Pretty easy for me to come over here with my thumb and select start date, end date, do all of that. It would be nice to have a little bookmark on my phone where if I needed to submit a, a sick, leave, sick leave request, I could just do it right there on my phone and not have to worry about logging into the internet or whatever environment's out there. The other thing that's nice about this is using Nintex Live, you can publish this form to be out there available for anonymous users. So in the event that you have something that's behind the firewall, uh, but yet I want to let anonymous folks submit forms like this, you could come out here and let them fill out the request, hit submit, and you're, you're off and running. So I really like that ability. Now obviously in the vacation request, you want to get a little bit more creative on where the request is coming from. Uh, who the individual is requesting it and that type of thing. But very, very easy to kind of interact with the form interface to drag and drop items, again, from the left-hand side into the form, come into the form and be able to modify things. So if this description is just taking up too much real estate, we can just simply shrink it down and maybe I want to put some text right above it that maybe is a disclaimer. Before you submit your request, you need to abide by X, Y, and Z rules. Um, so just a lot of integration there. And the other thing that I like, since it's right in there with the platform, is that if I want to create another column, I don't have to exit out of this interface and go back into the list settings, look at the site columns, uh, content types, add site column. I can just do it right here in line. Create a column right here in the in the uh, light box. Once I'm done, it's going to immediately show up on the list, drag and drop it into the form, and you're off and running. So very, very nice interface to be able to do all of this. And I'm going to go ahead and publish this particular item uh, out there. So let's hit the Publish button so that way it's now available so that when I go to fill out my new leave request, it's in a nice, friendly format uh, that's much more user-friendly. So the form is published. We'll go ahead and click OK and then we'll be off and running uh, with our new form. So a lot of advantages to uh, using the Nintex workflow and forms in the HR process. Uh, there are a lot of different things that you can leverage uh, that I haven't even touched on today as far as HR is uh, concerned. So I think what I want to do from here is I want to pause with the demonstration and um, come back to uh, what we're doing here and ask a, or answer maybe a few questions. So while I'm bringing up this final uh, page here, I want you to go ahead and ask a few questions and uh, put them out here and we'll do our best to answer those. And I'll bring up the final question item here. I'll give folks a second to ask questions and then we will go from there. All right, so let's read through some of the questions here.
All right. So one folks, one of the uh, individuals just commented that the statistics that we were able to show is really what they're looking for. So we have a few case studies, uh, business case studies that we can send over if you need some more information on some of the processes and maybe documented ones. So if you're an individual that's in HR or IT and you see some value in this, but you need um, some uh, case studies to kind of support this, and maybe sell this individually, um, feel free to send myself, Terry Simpson, or Julie Oates a message here, and we can kind of uh, send some of those to you. All right, so does this work the same for on-premise SharePoint versus in the cloud? And that is a wonderful question. And the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, so Nintex has an on-premise solution that you can use, and they've been using that for several years now. But they now have, in Office 365, I think it came out in September, um, a download that you can use in the cloud, and it's really nice. It's almost the exact same interface. It's still browser-based, and there are a lot of actions that you have available uh, for individuals to go out and build workflows within Office 365. So it definitely is available. And what I would encourage you to do is if you have an Office 365 environment today, go out and visit the SharePoint store. And when you open up the SharePoint store, um, you can see out there that um, uh, the Nintex download is available. And there's two different ones. There's one for workflow and one for forms. Um, on another side note there, uh, to further expand on that question, on December the 19th, um, there is going to be a webinar on Nintex for Office 365 specifically. Um, so I encourage you to go out to protivity.sharepoint.com and look at the events section, and you can sign up for that webinar where we're going to review the Nintex tool in Office 365. All right. Can we extend the Nintex uh, with custom code? Absolutely you can. And the thing that I really like about it is that you can go out, especially in the on-premise environment, and create your own custom actions. And I really love the ability to create those custom actions because you get a ton out of the box with Nintex, um, but you're going to have external databases, ERP systems, and those type of things that you want to connect to that are very custom to your organization, and you can go and create actions that are specific to those and save them and then just simply drag and drop them into the interface. So very, very nice to be able to do that. All right. So I think that's about all we have for the majority of the questions. Um, let me see, there's a couple more coming in here. Let me grab one or two of these real quick. So does the Nintex forms... Uh, or, I think the question is, are Nintex forms InfoPath forms? And if that is, hopefully that is the question. And basically, it is not. <laughs> it is not the same. So InfoPath is still its own kind of set of forms that you can create and that are out there and available to use. Still a very good tool, uh, but Nintex has some functionality that's a little bit tight, more tightly integrated and easier to use, I think. But InfoPath is still a good tool set so that in the event that you have forms that are appropriate for that, I definitely encourage you to use that tool, uh, but it definitely doesn't replace that per, per se. So I think I've, I've already gone over a couple minutes here. Um, so I want to thank everyone for coming on to the webinar today. I appreciate your time. Again, we do these every two weeks, uh, and they're free for 30 minutes. So feel free to check out the site, protivity.sharepoint.com. <laughs> You'll see all of our archived webinars that are out there, and feel free to sign up for one. So thank you guys for coming, and feel free to send us an email or message if you have any other questions. Thanks.